Our E3, a dense jungle of hectic video game discovery awaits. That jungle will reveal games like Red Dead Redemption 2, God of War, Call of Duty World War 2, Uncharted the Lost Legacy, Destiny 2. You get the idea. Is the idea to show off a load of sequels? No. Well, yes, but that's really the point. I'm Zoe. And I'm James. And these are the games to look forward to at this year's E3. If you thought Uncharted was dead, you're wrong. And also a bit stupid. It's a pretty big deal for Sony, so they're not throwing away this franchise anytime soon. Mm -mm. The latest instalment has the most taking none of your shit character at the helm, the Aussie Chloe Fraser. And she's teaming up with Nadine Ross, the mercenary who we're used to seeing as an antagonist. She's the one from Uncharted 4. But now she's teaming up with Chloe. And they're pretty unstoppable. Just check this out. <laughs> 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 So far, all we've seen of Uncharted The Lost Legacy is a nine minute demo and this Riverboat Revelation cinematic, so it's ripe for a longer peek. A playable demo could even rear its head. We're hoping to see a bit more of the puzzle side of the game, seeing as on the hunt for the tusk of Ganesh. Huh? It's like a part of a giant Indian elephant god, i.e. quite a big deal. <laughs> Our favourite Italian plumber is back. Sorry Luigi, but red is my favourite colour. This time his hat has eyes, which raises a lot of questions. Does it feel? Can it talk? Are all its organs in that hat squished into its tiny fabric lining? You have to stop asking people weird questions about Mario. Mm, no, I don't. And I won't, because I need answers. Anyway, Nintendo's Shigeru Miyamoto, he's a big deal, says that Odyssey is going to be open world and set in a city called... Ha! <laughs> Zoe, Zoe, have you seen this? No? The city's called New Donk. New donk. Everyone knows what we're thinking. Just leave it at that. There's lampposts to swing on, or you can throw your sentinel hat like a boomerang and use it as a makeshift platform. And surprise, surprise, Bowser has kidnapped Peach again. Plus, he looks like a pimp. What? Yeah, seriously, just take a look. <laughs> Moving on from that, and everything outside the surprisingly normal city is pretty trippy. There's a wild, wild west town, a fantasy forest, and a geometric extravaganza. The only bad news is Odyssey is only exclusive to the Switch. Damn it, Nintendo, can't you just spread the joy around a little? No? Well then, we're going to take a look at a Sony exclusive. You know, for balance. Yes, Kratos has had a major makeover, and we're not talking about cosmetics, despite his obvious love for a bit of body paint. The Berserker has taken a holiday from sunny ancient Greece and voyaged somewhere where Norse gods roam and beards must be grown. Hey, that rhymed! Yeah, I'm pretty proud of it. Yeah, well, I said it rhymed. I didn't say it was good. Wow. Anyway, Kratos has also picked up a son by the looks of it. Going by the name Atreus, he's the offspring of Kratos and an unknown woman. Saucy. Mm -hmm. Atreus is pretty handy with a bow, but he's still got a lot to learn, namely the harsh codes of survival and combat. And how not to shoot your dad. Yeah, that's kind of important too. The good news is that with all the baddies lurking in the snowy forest, it shouldn't be very hard, especially with Kratos getting all paternal. Some fans even think that he might be gearing up to become Odin. Aww. Kratos is not awe. It's... <laughs> Historical reboots are so hot right now, and just like uh, another game, Call of Duty is returning to the past, this time to World War II. Oh, you're talking about Battlefield. But where that was World War I, Call of Duty is focusing on the trenches, Normandy beach landings, and the general massive loss of life that was World War II. Get your head down and keep moving! Without mentioning any other games, Call of Duty has returned to its roots, and it's looking all the better for it. And we got to see some shooting of Nazis in the forest. Yeah, non-zombie ones this time. And the tagline mentions the liberation of Western Europe, and many gamers have noticed that it could tie in with a mention of bridge troops, who deployed multiple bridges. Bet you didn't see that one coming who deployed multiple bridges in World War II. You won't just be playing as the Allied infantry either. We expect to see women fighting for the French resistance, possibly a German family, a British officer, and an African-American officer from a different regiment. Basically, Activision are going global rather than only focusing on the American sides of things, and we're excited for it. We're excited. We're very excited. We've had to tone down our excitement quite a bit because we broke a microphone with our screaming. So, we will see more Destiny 2 at E3. The aftermath of the official Destiny 2 livestream has left us with a lot of questions. How do light levels work now? Is the tower gone for good? Who wants to join my clan? Anyone? 
You're a bunch of dirty misfits, but you're all that's left, so you'll have to do. We're hoping that at least some of these will be answered on stage during the show, as well as giving us that all-important date for the upcoming beta. We've already been hands-on with one of the new multiplayer modes called Countdown, but we want more. Well, good news. We have footage of a strike at the Inverted Spire. It's set on one of the new planets Nessus in a place called the Cistern, and it's basically brilliant, ending in a giant three-stage battle with a boss called the Modular Mind. Oh god, we need it. Like, now. By now, you all have seen the announcement trailer and the art floating around out there about the sequel to the hit cowboy RPG. By the looks of things, it will be centred around a group of outlaws rather than the single figure of John Marston. Rockstar have already experimented with intertwining narratives, just look at GTA V, so it makes sense that they continue this trend with Red Dead. If the first game taught us anything, it's that everybody loves a good anti-hero. And we have a map. This leak shows a location labelled Great Plains, plus this boat bit in the trailer implies you'll be sailing at least a little bit. Interestingly, people are guessing it's a prequel to Red Dead, thanks to the horse-drawn carriage and the general dress of the frontier people in the trailer. But then people also guess the lotto numbers every week, so, you know, sometimes people guess wrong. Solo player campaign. Centered on a female stormtrooper. Set after Return of the Jedi. Yoda versus Darth Maul showdown. Okay, we can stop listing things now. The thing is, there's so much to be excited about in Star Wars Battlefront 2. You can play through multiple eras, stretching from Luke Skywalker all the way to Rey. And Battlefront 2 is promising to show the untold soldier's story. The soldier isn't a rebel though. Is it weird that I'm kind of glad it's an Imperial stormtrooper? Probably. Ugh, I don't think I care. It will be a good chance to get a glimpse of what it's like to work for the Empire, which so often is considered evil. Because it is. I'm just going to ignore you. Seeing the grey moral side of the Empire would be a welcome change of pace, and with the movie gearing up to explore the same concepts, we think Star Wars Battlefront 2 will be a blast. Mm, I'm stressed. Wanna talk about it? Good viewer, if you don't know why the possibility of the Evil Within 2 is making my heart rate jump, let me explain. On one hand, you have intensely clever foreshadowing via environmental design, and on the other, well, this. And this. And this. This survival horror is from the mind of Shinji Mikami, who directed the first Resident Evil and Resi 4. Yes, the one with that chainsaw guy. The Evil Within 2 is rumoured to be announced by Bethesda at E3, and we for one can't wait to revisit the gore fest. Uh, I can wait. With stealth sections taking you through rural villages, as well as going in an electric chair when you get new abilities, an electric chair, the Evil Within 2 would have a lot to live up to. Let's just wait and see whether they bring back those controversial cinematic bars. Ooh, those were a tad divisive. Just a little. The fact that Shenmue 3 is the most funded game on Kickstarter ever is kind of crazy. 69,000 backers pledged over $6 million to the game. As an open world action RPG, it follows Ryu Hazuki on his quest across China to avenge his father. He meets Shenua on the way, who knows of a legend that foretold their journey together. Ooh, spooky. Shenmue has a massive fan base, all won over by the dizzying amount of minigames, the revolutionary use of the quick time event, and the unprecedented amount of freedom players had. Some consider Shenmue to be one of the first open world games. It's about time we're told more about it, to be honest. December 2017 is the release date on their Kickstarter page, so I'd say it's time we saw some new footage. <laughs> If Blade Runner were a game, it would be Cyberpunk 2077. Footage is rather scarce, so we'll have to make this one quick. It looks real good. Are we done? Uh, yeah, but you haven't mentioned Assassin's Creed. Yeah, but there's no footage for it, so we can't. But it's, you know, it's Assassin's Creed. Yeah, we don't have any footage, so it's really difficult to talk about it screenshot? on camera. Screenshot? You can't make a video out of a screenshot. There'll also be some Assassin's Creed. And that's it. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video and let us know what you're looking forward to in the comments below. Click the boxes on the left for more content from us and don't forget to hit that big button in the middle to subscribe for more gaming news, reviews, previews and features right here on Games Radar Plus.